today's total lips. So I'm going to give you an overview of what metals are we using, what are the coatings, what are the different types, and what are the newer advancements in the same. So when we talk of metal composition, titanium alloys, titanium aluminium, vanadium alloys are proving to be better than COCR because it is more biocompatible, it has a lower modulus of elasticity than uh, as similar to a cortical bone. Rather than using COCR, which are hard, lead to increased stress, rise, stress shielding and thigh pain. Surface coatings, whatever we may use, the initial fixation of the implant is primarily important because a micro motion of less than 20 microns can lead to good ingrowth or on-growth. For on-growth, the stems are usually plasma sprayed with metal powders or they are grid blasted, hammered on with hard abrasive particles of aluminium oxide, which leads to a roughened texture. For in-growth, there is fiber mesh sintered beads or porous metals with a pore size of 50 to 400 microns, which lead to better in-growth. These are the coatings, grid blasted, plasma sprayed, titanium sintered beads, HA coating, gryption, trivicular metal. Porocot was one of the first in 1977 when pure titanium was sintered onto the titanium alloy with a pore size of 250 microns. Then came Diofix in 2003, wherein uh, Porocot was coated with hydroxyapatite uh, layer. Gryption came into being in 2009, where titanium sintered beads had an increased porosity, 80% of the surface volume being porous with an increased coefficient of friction. Trabecular metal, though appearing to be new, they have been in the market since 1997, where we use porous tantalum, which is similar to cancellous bone with 80% porosity. These are the elements of the cementless stem. We all know of them. This is an important paper by Mont Group in 2011, which describes six types of uncemented stems. Type 1 uncemented stem is the single wedge stem, wherein it tapers down mediolaterally, but it is flat in the anteroposterior plane. Hence, it leads to a medial lateral capture, and in the lateral view, it is leading to a three-point fixation. It is proximally coated and uses brooch-only technique. It has 99% survival at 20 years. Mind you, the only reason for failures in type 1 stems, that is Bencox or taper lock stems, is in use of with uh, door type A canals, wherein the, the stem engages early into the cortex, and therefore the porous coating is not engaged with the metaphysis. In these cases, preferably ream and then hammer. In type 2 stems, they are double wedge, that is mediolaterally tapering and anteroposteriorly as well tapering. Their intention is not to fit but fill the metaphysis in anteroposterior and mediolateral plane. It is proximally coated, is, it uses reaming and broaching both. 100% survival at 20 years, only uh, uh, problem being thigh pain in 12% of patients, examples being the summit stem. Type 3 stems are the tapered stems, very popular these days. Unlike type 1 and 2, they are smoothly curved down rather than abruptly changing their, their taper. They are surface coated proximally and distally and they fit at the metadiaphysis. Type 3A is the Mallory head stem. It is conically designed with rounded corners. It has got proximal wings and fins for better rotational stability, 99% survival at 10 years. 3B are the popular Wagner stems, conical design with multiple longitudinal splines for better rotational stability. They mainly use for distal fixations and you can adjust the versions for the same. Type 3C stems, very popular in European countries these days, have a rectangular flat cross section and they have an eight anteroposterior as well as a medial lateral taper. They fit at the metadiaphysis level and not only at the metaphysis. They ensure fixation with three point stability and fully grid blasted, that's what we use with brooch only technique. Very good survival rate, uh, examples being Ben Cox, Joy Muller, and the CLS Protorna. Very interesting to know the development of these stems. Type 4 uncemented stems are the cylindrical, fully coated stems, AML being an example. They are essentially diaphysically fixing stems, the only problem being stress shielding. Why that happens is because if you have a distally holding stem, the proximal femora is not loaded and that leads to osteolysis. Four grades of uh, stress shielding, as you can see, grade 1 is when you see a lysic, lytic area in the medial neck. Grade 2 is when the LT is osteolytic. Grade 3 is when you see the osteolysis going distal to the LT. And grade 4 is when you see the osteolysis entirely around the stem. Type 5 uncemented stems are the modular stems, uh, the Arcos, the Revitan, the SROMs. The advantage is that in, in uh, dysmorphic stems, you can ream the canal dis differently for the metaphysis and the diaphysis, proven to be very successful at 10 years with 99% survival. Type 6 uncemented stems are the anatomic stems. They have a bow, they are conically designed. Uh, they are essentially meant to fill the canal, but unfortunately they don't have the clinical success as desired. 
the new kid on the block the short femoral stems the rationale for the development of the same has been it preserves bone stock hence revision is easier it does ha does not have a thigh pain because there is no distal stem extension there is no evidence of stress shielding because you are directly loading into the metaphysis itself there is no proximal distal mismatch because there is no distal extension and in newer approaches they can easily be used in direct anterior approach for example multitude of short stems being available mactigi gave a classification which made a lot of sense the head stabilized which are surface uh, resurfacing procedures the neck stabilized which use the neck cut which is very much proximal and you load and an implant in the calca region and the metaphysically stabilized which are usually the conventional short stems which are gaining a lot of popularity the mont classification again is similar femoral neck only calcar loading calcar loading with a lateral flare and type 4 are the shortened tapered conventional stems so these are the column stems that have been used they are not fully investigated though we have a 10 year data of good survival but they have got a limited use this is the proxima and the meta stem with a proximal neck cut the shortened conventional tapered stem very popular these days they are either trochanteric sparing or humming by definition they have a length of less than 120 mm examples being bencox trilock taper lock uh, microplasty and the ml taper they have been well investigated and have a 98% survival at 10 year follow up now the rationale for these is uh, we have got a three point fixation in conventional stems short stems have the principle of wedge fixation at two points these two points are usually uh, located at the meta diaphysal level as you can see here at the in the diagram and that's where it gets hitched or pegged it is either 2d or 3d depending on where the wedging occur occurs so that's about the short stems dual taper modular stems which are bimodular have a high revision rate because of increased modularity it is mechanically failing there's dissociation there's galvanic corrosion pitting corrosion and crevice corrosion hence they have not been in clinical use hence my my dear friends and seniors it depends on what problem we have on hand it needs to be measured as to where the bone stock is and what is the patient requirement that's how you select your stem i thank you for your patient hearing Thank mm -hmm. you.